Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at Sabre user fields in the Sabre production add-on. We're going to explore different areas of the Sabre user fields. We're going to look at how do we set up the fields so that they can be visible in different modules and areas. We're going to review the fields and how they look on list and card pages. We're going to look at how you're able to see that user defined information directly in the table, which is super helpful for when you're writing your custom reports or you're making modifications. You don't need to link into an additional table. We've actually embedded these user fields into the source table that they're being created for, like, for example, your customer or vendor. So the first thing that we're going to explore is how we set up the user fields. So we're going to look at all the different tables and places that you're able to add them, the ability to be able to set specific data types so you can force people to enter the data in a certain way, which is incredibly helpful for if you want to use those on reporting, filtering, sorting throughout your use of Business Central. We're also going to explore how you can add lookups to other tables in Business Central or even create your own option tables. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump in and we're going to take a look at setting these guys up. We are inside of Business Central. So where we have stored these because they are used all over is in company information. So users can search their company information, the standard page that they use to enter in all the data about their company, and they will see a new option to set up Saber user fields. So here you can see that you have the ability to add them to a variety of places. So I can add 10 user fields to the customer cards, vendor cards, item cards, sales headers, sales lines, the list goes on. You can add them to production areas, you can add them to service areas, you can add them to uh, production order headers and line information. So within each of these designated areas, you'll have up to 10 user fields that you can basically just turn on without any kind of programming or development experience. So what users will do is they'll validate the table number, which is just the out of the box table number from Business Central. They'll activate the field number. They'll give it a caption depending on what it is the new field needs to say so that it's recognizable for the users who are going to be entering into the fields. Under the field data type, you can see here your drop down list, which encompasses pretty much every option that you would need to be able to enforce users to enter in data in a format that makes sense to you. So for anybody who has ever done report writing in the past or had to do any kind of programming, it's incredibly frustrating when you have users who will enter in date, for example, in a variety of formats. So some users enter in 2022, 05, 26. Others enter 05, 26, 2022. Some people put May 26, 2022. So the idea here is that if you're setting the field as being a date data type, as an example, it's going to force all the users to format things correctly format it the same way and then again just using that data and, and extracting it and looking at it later is much easier. You can do text fields which allow users just to be able to enter in free form data so that's helpful for comments or reference information. We'll see in a moment where you can do a code which will allow you to actually look up to another table in Business Central and leverage that. Option list so again, we'll also explore this where you can set a specific option set that's completely unique to you. Decimal, which allows users to only enter in a number, but they are able to put decimals into it. Integer, which allows any whole number. So if you put in a decimal, it will round up. Boolean is your typical true or false. Date is a date field. Time would be a time field. And then date time is both date and time. So users will be able to set the data type that they would like. They will activate the field so that it presents on the pages. Without this Boolean, they will not be able to see it. So that makes sense. So you would just hide the fields until you need them. Once you need them, you turn them on. You can indicate whether or not 
things can be editable. So a lot of the times you're encouraging or needing to collect data. So most often this does need to be editable, the new fields that you create. So we do default this as being true, but you can always deselect it if you needed to. As I mentioned, you can use a field data type of code. So you can see here, once I've done that, I need to tell Business Central, well, what field do I wanna look up? So in this case, I'm indicating that I wanna look up the resource table. I'm seeing the common Business Central it gives me a little bit of a reality check to make sure I've grabbed the right one. I can see which field in that table I would like to look up. And then again, a little bit of a reality check once I've selected the field number, I will look and make sure that the name is making sense to the data that I would like. And lastly, I have the ability to be able to set a default value if I chose. So on the third user field for the customer that I am choosing to incorporate is the option list. So because I've got a field data type of option, I can go ahead and set specific options. So again, I'm controlling the list. I'm controlling what is being shown. So I've created the options for the user. So I've indicated in this, there's a construction industry, a food industry, or a manufacturing industry. Of course, I can maintain this list. I can update this ongoing. So as I branch out and work in other markets, I can add this list to this list. I can make changes if I need to as well. So I can go ahead and set those. You also have the ability to be able to set user flows. So user flows would allow you that if you were to set a user defined field, let's say on the customer card, and you indicated that you wanted that to pull in when you use that customer on a sales header or on a sales line, you could have a user field from say the customer card flow through to a user field on the sales header if you chose. So the next area to explore is being able to see these user fields in action on the list and card pages throughout Business Central. So the next thing that we're going to do is jump back into Business Central. We'll take a look at the customer card and see those user fields that we created. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate to my customer's record because that's where I had created those three user fields. So I can select any customer card that I'd like. So by default, the Sabre user fields will then populate all of those Sabre user fields that I've now set up and activated. But of course, using my personalization, I would have the ability to move these to another area if it made more sense. So for example, if I wanted whether or not they were an international customer to be in the shipping section, I could go ahead and just move that. Perhaps the account manager is something that I would like to see in the general section of my customer card. So I can go ahead and just move the fields to the places that make the most sense. You'll recall from earlier in the video, we had the account manager. This was a look up to our resource card. So you'll notice when I select my three dots, I will see that this is showing me the resource table because again, my data type was a code and I chose to look up my resources. If I scroll down and I look at my shipping section, international, I had indicated that was a Boolean. So it is showing as yes, I could always go ahead and I could select that as no. Industry, again, so manufacturing, you'll recall from my option list, so I could go ahead, select my three dots, and if I had made a mistake or I needed to update this for any reason, easily I am able to do that. So those are the ability to be able to see that information on my, um, my card page. And then I'm also able to see the information on my list page as well. So that can be incredibly helpful for users as well.
So in the last area here, we just want to review how the Saver user fields are embedded directly into the customer table, vendor table, item table, whichever area you've activated them, which again makes it incredibly easy when you're writing reports to make sure that you can encompass this new data or you're doing customs, you're not dealing with having to link in an additional table. Everything is just embedded in. And we'll just navigate to our customer table. And then we can use our handy help and support. And we'll go ahead and inspect pages and data to open up the list of the fields. So here, if I have my user as my search, you can see that the Saber user fields are here. We can see a snapshot of the data that is in the fields for the specific record that we're on. And again, we can just continue to use this all throughout the, the reporting and the customization needs that you may have. So as always, if you have any questions or are interested in learning more about Saver production from Saver, please feel free to contact us using the contact information below.